the Gran Turismo movie is getting some rave reviews. But did you know that it's based on an incredible true story? It's a gripping tale that takes us through the twists and turns of a gamer's journey to the real-life racetrack. Join us as we uncover the original story of Jan Mardenborough, the tragic crash that shook the world, and where the movie makers got it all wrong. Jan Mardenborough grew up in Darlington, England, the son of English footballer Steve Mardenborough. Jan's mother, Leslie, portrayed in the movie by Jerry Horner, aka Ginger Spice, was frustrated with her son's addiction to the popular racing game Gran Turismo. In her rage, she once threatened to shut down their internet connection to get him to stop playing. His parents thought the thousands of hours he poured into his PlayStation console were a waste of time, and wanted him to get a job or find something better to do with his life. Little did his parents know that something better was right around the corner. It was called GT Academy. GT Academy is an international gaming competition where the best Gran Turismo players in the world compete against each other for an opportunity to become a real-life professional race car driver. Yan first became aware of GT Academy when he was 19 and saw it in a TV advertisement. In hindsight, he would later reveal that it was coincidence or just pure luck that GT Academy came around at the right time in his life when he was able to fully commit 100% of his attention to the game. He booted his PlayStation one morning and a new menu was on the screen. He entered the Nissan PlayStation GT Academy and began competing at home using his homemade sim racing setup that featured a steering wheel and a racing seat. What happened next would change his life forever. Martin Bro would thrust himself into the spotlight by triumphing over a staggering pool of 90,000 contenders he emerged as the undisputed victor of the competition. His reward? A coveted opportunity to take the wheel for Nissan at the Dubai 24-hour race, a testament to his undeniable skill and determination. And that was just the beginning. For the next several years, Yan enjoyed deploying his talents as a driver in a variety of racing series, from the British GT Championship to various Formula 3 racing series to GT3 racing at the Spa 24 hours. It seemed like success was always around the next corner. With everything seeming to go Yan's way, it came as an absolute shock when on March 28, 2015, Yan Martinborough's life took a harrowing turn. It happened during a VLN endurance event at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Yan was hard at work behind the wheel of his GT3 class Nissan GTR, racing like a pro. Without warning, in the blink of an eye, his car became airborne. The race prepared Nissan to fight gravity, flipping and crashing in a heart-stopping moment. In an instant, so many lives were forever altered. What the movie depicts as a dramatic crash took an even darker turn in reality. It claimed the life of a spectator and left others injured. What happened was the unfortunate result of some bad decisions made by avid race fans. The secondary fence meant to keep the spectators safe was breached by spectators who were eager for a closer view. That risky decision effectively turned a thrilling event into a fateful disaster. It's commendable that the Gran Turismo movie doesn't leave this major event out of Yan's story. In fact, Martin Bro served as a stunt driver, consultant, and co-producer on the film. It was clearly important to him to tell the story in full. He was quoted as saying, when this was discussed, whether to be in the movie or not, it had to be in the movie. However, as with any movie adaptation of a real-life story, there's usually some creative license taken with the story. And Gran Turismo's no exception to that rule. Let's take a look at a few half-truths and misrepresentations in the movie. First, the movie portrays the crash as a turning point for Yan a wake-up call to start taking his career seriously and recommit himself to working hard on his racing. In the movie, the tragic crash leads to him securing a third-place finish in the 24 hours of Le Mans. While it's true that Yan did indeed secure that victory, in real life that happened several years before the fatal crash. So the crash wasn't really a tragedy turned opportunity for the young racer. Second, Yan wasn't actually the first winner of the GT Academy. The Academy was established in 2008 and first won by Lucas Ordonez. Martin Burrow was one of two winners in 2011. The other winner was Brian Heitkotter. 
In reality, Yan and Brian were teammates, not foes. Together, they won at the Dubai 24 Hours race. Another area where the Gran Turismo movie takes some liberties with the truth is the completely fictional character of Lea Vega, portrayed by popular automotive YouTuber Amelia Hartford. There have, indeed, been amazingly talented female finalists in the GT Academy. However, it wasn't until 2016 that Elise Menorca broke barriers and showed that the girls can hang with the guys. Prior to that year, all GT Academy finalists were males, and the movie doesn't cover that time period. It's easy for us to forgive writers for adding fictional background characters to add depth or inclusivity to a movie. Storytelling's an art, and with art comes a certain amount of space to color outside the lines. However, what may surprise many moviegoers is that the leading characters, Jack Salter, played by David Harbour, and Danny Moore, portrayed by Orlando Bloom, are also both completely made up. In the movie, Jack Salter is supposedly a grumpy old failed racer who is hired to run the GT Academy. How can the movie's producers justify fabricating this character out of thin air and assigning him such an important part of the story? Well, it's for the sake of simplicity. Producers claim that this character is actually a combination of three or four real-life contributors to the GT Academy, and it was easier to tell their story through a single character rather than overcomplicate the movie with more names and faces. But what about Orlando Bloom's character, Danny Moore? The purely fabricated Danny is supposed to be a Nissan marketing executive who dreams up the idea of the GT Academy and gets Nissan to back it. Is Moore also a convenient storytelling device who represents an entire team of people responsible for establishing the Academy? Actually, no. Danny Moore is directly inspired by Darren Cox, who actually is the creator and was the director of the GT Academy. While the Danny Moore character is inspired by Cox, he went on record to claim, Danny is an approximation of me, but certainly not as rebellious and anti-establishment as I was. While Gran Turismo the movie gets a bit creative with the timeline and characters, that doesn't change the fact that Yan's story is powerful. His bravery in the face of danger, his determination to overcome setbacks, and his readiness to tackle whatever comes his way is inspiring. It's a story that reminds us that true courage is about moving forward in the face of fear, and that success comes from working hard even when you don't want to. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe because that really helps our channel. Until next time, keep moving forward.